Okay, so continue on 2.6. Hopefully, you watched that intro video about family of functions and you understand, uh, sorry, about function notation. Um, because in this section on family of functions, um, we're going to be using this f of x notation. So, hopefully, you know that f stands for the name of the function. Um, this is like what the function does uh, over here. Okay, so at any rate, um, family of functions. So, just like a regular family, you're going to have like a parent. And then from there, you're going to have like child that are kind of have some traits of the parent, but have some some differences. So really, the idea is like, if we took this is going to be called our parent, like an x squared is going to be one example of a parent. And we're going to say, what would happen if you were to add a plus two, right? What would the child look like? What would the, the other function look like if we slapped a plus two onto that? So that's what we're going to be investigating today in this lesson. Okay, so quick definition, you might want to get down parent function. Is the simplest form in a set of functions. So, for example, if we have um, just f of x equals x, all right, um, then we could change it a lot by, say, adding like a plus 3 on the end, or we could do another one called, I don't know, g of x, and that's just going to be 2 times the original function x, or we could do another one called h, and let's just say that that is 2, let's say 5 less than the original one. So x minus 5, so right, those kind of ran together. But if you have all these functions, um, that's called a family of functions. And the most basic starting one is, in this case, the f of x. Okay, so uh, we're going to do that parent. And then also we're going to do like the x squared. So we have x squared, and then we could say multiply by 3 and add 1. That would be a, um, a more complex version of the simple one. Right, so in this family, of our x squared is our parent, another example of a child function would just be anything that modifies x squared. So we could do like x minus 5 and then square that. All right, so I don't know if this made any sense, but I have a question down here for if we have f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 8, anyone know what the simplest version or the parent of that would be? If this would be one of the functions in the family, but what would be the simplest one? Okay, and so I'm not sure if that made sense, but um, in this case, it would just be absolute value of x with no plus 8, no multiplication, nothing like that, just straight absolute value of x. That would be the parent. Okay, and we're going to do this later. I think we do absolute value in section 2.8. For today in 2.6, there's going to be two parents, which are uh, f of x equals x and f of x equals x squared. Okay, so the next thing you want to do in your notes is actually just to graph those two parent graphs. All right. Um, and if you didn't know what they look like, you could certainly um, use a graphing program, right? So the, the f of x equals x squared, right? If you weren't sure, we're going to use a thing called Desmos. We're going to use it a bunch throughout the year. If you have a graphing calculator, that'll work too. But you just go to this desmos.com and just type in that address. Or sorry, that uh, equation of y equals x squared. You can see that the parent makes this U shape, which is called a parabola. It starts at 0, 0 right down here and then um, makes this parabola shape. Okay, so uh, draw that in your notes quick. All right, it's just going to look like, whoa, that is not good. So let me try this again. Okay, so it looks like that, and then the other side is exact copy of it going into the negatives. Again, that's not very great. Apologize for my poor drawing here. Okay, and then uh, y equals x is just, um, that's actually just a straight line, right? So that's got like a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. So that's a slightly different parent that starts at 0 and has a 1 to 1 slope. Okay, and so now we're just going to modify them. And I think in the beginning here, I'm going to focus on the x squared over here. It's a little more interesting, and it'll make more sense that we explain it that way. Okay, so... Um, we first want to say, okay, what's going to happen if we have x squared and we slap a minus 3 on the end of it? All right, and so what I have here is the original parent, right, which is shown here. This is the f of x equals x squared. We just graphed it a second ago. I'm going to say, okay, now what would we do if we had a g of x was x squared minus 3? What would this minus 3 modify? Okay, and so all that would happen is these are the, here's x, um, and then we square all these values here. And so if we just subtract 3, we'd get 1 and negative 2, right? 
and 0 minus 3. So it's whatever x squared was, but now it's 3 less than that. So this would be a minus 2. If we do 4, minus 3 would be 1. Right? So in g of x, we square x, gives us this column, and then minus 3, and, that, and that's what it looks like. Okay, so visually what this is, is originally we were at negative 2, 4. So that point would be right here. Okay, but now it has dropped to 1. Right now it's down here at 1. Uh, similarly, when x was negative 1 here, we were at positive 1 before, but now it's been dropped down to negative 2. two, 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 two. So hopefully you can see that our graph just got slid down three points, right? So all the points have just been slid down by three. So we have the same U shape, which I'm going to struggle to draw, right? But it's that exact same shape just slid down by three. Okay, so this minus three on the end of the function just moved it down three. Okay, so you don't have to make the table and everything, um, but let's do one more. So I think it's down here on the bottom here. What do we want to go up then, right? So minus three on the end here made it drop three. So what if you want to translate it four up? Okay, so take a second to think about that before continuing the video. Okay, so your answer here is, um, I'm going to make a new function and call it G. F was our original one, so I'm just going to give, you can use whatever name you want, H, M, K, whatever you want. But we're going to call it G of X for a new function, and it's the same thing as the parent. It has the X squared. But if I want to go up 4, a slap of plus 4 on the end makes it go up 4. Okay, so this number on the very back here just makes it go up or down, right? It really is the, the y-intercept in a way, right? Like this, this example down here, the g of x1 at the bottom there would have a y-intercept of 4, positive 4, and then it'd be the same parabola shape as before. Okay, so the number on the end makes it go up or down. Now, next up is left or right. Okay, and this is this is pretty confusing. Um, and I, I have a, hard, a really hard time actually explaining this. Um, but it's it's basically the opposite of what you'd think. Okay, so to make it go left or right, instead of the, the number being on the back like it was in the previous one, if it's inside the parentheses with x, that's going to make it go left or right. All right, and the, the trick is it's actually opposite of what you think. So if we were to take a guess that this plus 3 um, would make x increase by 3, so it would make it shift to the right 3. So, you know, like logically... We would sort of expect this graph to just be shifted over by 3 like that. Okay, but actually the reverse is true. That plus 3 actually makes us go to the left 3. So we end up over here, and we have our parabola shape shifted to the left 3. All right, so here's my best explanation as to why this is true. So the best thing I can do is give us is to just take the table of points. All right, and so in our original function, shown in black here, when x was 0, we got an output of 0. That's the point right there. Okay, but what's really happening now is when x is 0, if we put it into our new function, our green function, we actually add 3 to it first and then square. Okay, so when um, x is 0 on our new function, we actually square it and get 9. So we're way up here at 9 way up off the graph when x is 0. So the idea is when we put in a 0, it's really like the old function inputting 3, because right? we're adding 3 to that 0 and then squaring it. So it's really like this point 9 um, in the graph, 3, 9. All right, similarly, if you look at negative 1, right, in the original function, we just square it to get 1. But now we're not squaring negative 1, right? Now when we put in the green function, we're actually squaring 2. I would do negative 1 plus 3, then square that, so we get 4. So at this point, um, it's actually like the point 4. So it's basically this point um, that was up here at 9 got shifted left 3, and the other point that was up here at 4 got shifted um, left 3. Okay, so each of these points is just what it used to be, but just shifted 3 to the left because we're adding 3 to the inputs. So the point that it used to be, um, we can actually go, like, to get 0, right, the output we used to get for 0, 0, we can now obtain that by inputting negative 3. Right? When you input negative 3 here, it becomes 0, and we square it, 
So this point um, of uh, when we had zero um, now corresponds to input negative three. So up here, if we had negative three as our input, we'd actually get zero as our, our output. It's kind of confusing, but the, the long and short of it is it's just opposite of what you think. The plus three inside the parenthesis here, here makes it go left three. Okay, so kind of an extension of this, take a guess, if we put a minus six there instead of a plus, and a minus six, what do you think would happen? Okay, and hopefully you realize, again, you would think negative six would make us go left six, but this is actually gonna make it go right six. Okay, so the long and short of this, is the number inside with x makes it go left or right opposite of what you think. Okay, and we're gonna do a summary slide uh, coming up next here. Okay, so uh, we're transforming our parent function of f of x equals x squared, right? And so this is all the different ways you can change it. You can have a number in front, number inside the parentheses, and number on the back. A, we're going to talk about tomorrow, this number in front. But for now, um, if you want to put this in your notes, um, h can make it go left or right shift the function, the parabola. Remember, this parent is going to be the, the square shape. I have a hard time drawing here again, but there's your basic parent. And so we can make it go left or right if there's a number inside there. Okay, and so you might want to draw an example here. So for left, it's opposite of what we think. So like a plus two would actually make us go left two. Okay, and to go right, um, you would think you'd add, but you actually subtract. So x minus four or something, that would make it go right four. Okay, so that's what h does. And then uh, for k, the number on the back, as we did in the previous slide, that's going to make us go up or down. Okay, and this is normal. All right, so an example of up would be x squared plus 7, that go up 7, and down would be like x squared minus 6, down 6. Okay, and so notice the difference here is like if it's in the parentheses, um, that makes it go left or right, and if it's not, then it makes it go up or down. Okay, so to help us understand that concept a little more, I want to do one more quick example. And so um, if we again take our parent function, so f of x equals x squared, okay, and then we start to modify it. So usually they'll use a different letter for the modified version. But if I just had, say, x minus 2 quantity squared plus 6 or something like that, so now this has two transformations, two modifications, and the minus 2 is going to make us go left or right opposite what we think. So in this case, the minus 2 will actually make us go right 2. It'll shift the parabola right 2. And then this guy in the back here is the up or down normal, what we think. So that one's going to go up 6. right? And if, you, if you're struggling with this, um, I encourage you, you can always just graph them on a calculator or whatever and see that this actually does work out um, as uh, described here. So here's a practice question for you to try out. Please note that it is a different parent. It's an x cubed to start, but it's the same concept, right? So try these questions, pause the video, and then I'll go through them. Okay, so how is it translated? Translate just means slide it around, right? So um, from our parent, the minus 2 is not inside the parentheses, so this one's just going to be going down 2 from the original. Um, if it's inside the parentheses, it goes left to right, opposite what we think. Look back at your notes if you're not sure. So this one's going to be going, instead of going right to, this is actually going to be going left to. Okay, this one's got both parts. So inside here is a left or right. And again, that's opposite what we think. So that's right one and then up eight because of the eight in the back. All right, and then the final one, again, two different transformations. The plus three makes us go left three and the minus nine makes us go down nine. Okay, real quick. So here's uh, going in reverse of that. So now we're starting with x squared. And then what would happen if you did these transformations? Take a minute and try. Okay, real quick, here's your answers. Um, hopefully you got it. The up or down is in the back and it's normal. Minus two for, minus three for down, plus seven for up, and minus three for down here. And then left to right is opposite. So left is adding and right is subtracting. All right, um, that's all we got. Uh, if you want to um, try homework, uh, here you go.
good luck. Um, it's just transforming the parent function.